isso me deixa sem reação. Não me sinto bem, não, Brian. Não é pra sentir bem. Não é pra sentir bem. This bitch. Sweet Brian went from being a charismatic, disabled man with a beautiful outlook in life to a serial womanizer, cheater, drug dealer, liar, and someone that ignores boundaries and bugs your phone so he knows every second of your day. Hello everyone and welcome back to Cheese My Corner. My name is Karen and I am so happy to be back. I'm not gonna lie, my heart is broken. I just have to learn at this point that no one in the Naidi Fiance world is safe. And since we're already here, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and to let me know your thoughts so far. After Brian arrives at the airport, his plan is to smooth things out with Ingrid so he can get lucky, you know? His main goal today is to try to get lucky. And when I say try, I really, really mean it because a gente tem que tirar os controles ainda, tudo mais melhor se a gente coloca lá dentro. Ryan decides that he wants to drive the car. And I understand, you know, he wants some autonomy. He wants to be able to make those decisions, show Ingrid that he's capable and that he, you know, doesn't need anybody, right? But then proceeds to ask her for help. Now, I understand that living with a disability can be difficult, and I understand that you might need to ask people for help sometimes. But when you spend your entire time with Ingrid, telling her that you are capable, that you can do all these things yourself, that you don't need no one's help, and then you proceed to ask her for help, not once, not twice, but many times throughout this episode, once you're in the car, Brian is already under the impression that he's going to marry Ingrid. He's already already telling her you know i'm going to marry you he's already head over heels for her when this is the first time they meet each other in person however ingrid looks past this once in the car they are smiling you know laughing with each other it's a good time so brian is you know getting in his head that he cannot wait to get to the hotel he cannot wait to be there you know be intimate with her all this stuff for him to go inside the hotel, ask Ingrid to help him take off his pants. With no indication that they're going to be intimate, Brian decides to take half a blue pill, you know, just in case. You know, this is the first time you guys see each other in person. You haven't even prepared intimacy and you're already taking a blue pill just in case intimacy does not start at the end of the day it starts at the beginning it starts with you giving your wife a coffee with you telling her how beautiful she is but brian is already under the impression that he's just gonna get it just because and he continues to tell us that he wants to seem normal while still and constantly asking ingrid for help he also shares that intimacy is extremely important to him i don't feel too much down here even though he can barely feel anything the fact that you are wanted is what matters to him brian says that usually when he meets someone for the first time and they're going to be in a relationship or they are in a relationship maybe i'll throw him a little test sometimes and have him help me out and get a gauge of of their attitude he starts giving tasks to ingrid you know take off my pants get over here i need to get on your shoulders take this inside the restroom i need you to stand right there and you know Again, I said it in the beginning, there is nothing wrong with asking your partner for help. But when you spend the entire time saying, I want to be normal, I'm an independent man that, you know, doesn't need help. And then you proceed to ask for help over and over again. That is the problem, especially because this is the first day you guys are meeting. And if you were trying to be intimate with her, let me tell you, it is not working. The last thing us women want is to have to be the caretaker of a man. I grew up in a Latino family and it is extremely common for all the women to do all the chores of the household. I remember that when I got married, I did not want to have to take care of another child. I want a man someone that was independent someone that could take care of themselves while in the shower brian proceeds to touch himself to put a catheter on now he asks ingrid if she wants to know how he does it and how he puts it on and she tells him no i don't want to know 
Deixa eu me explicar outro dia. And what does Brian decide to do? Not only does he proceed to tell her how he puts it on, but then he goes over to the bed, lays down next to her, and proceeds to jerk off in front of her. It seems like it's a little uncomfortable for Ingrid. I'm worried that I did expose too much too soon. And she had already told you that she did not want to know how today. And after this, this man still expecting to get intimacy. This man still expecting that Ingrid is gonna be like, oh yeah, you know what, let's be intimate with each other. She got the ick already, bro. So I'm hoping that we can, we can get past that. The moment you decide to do that and then proceed with not respecting her boundaries that she put in place already, you already f***ed up. Eu tô confusa porque o que ele disse que é muito independente. Ingrid shares in her confessional that, you know, she did not expect Brian to start showing her all of these things on the first day that they met. And I agree with her. Me pediu pra tirar a camiseta dele, é, me pediu pra ajudar no banho. You need to ease her into all of this. You can't just shove all the things onto her and hope that she's gonna be okay with it. I also think that Ingrid should have done research on her own. Like, I, I wholeheartedly believe that every single person that chooses to have a relationship with a disabled person needs to do research. Brian says that even though they didn't have sex last night, they woke up with a happy face. I think she was just a little uncomfortable with everything and a little in shock. You think, Brian? <laughs> you think. And then when Brian asks her if last night was too much for her, she says, not really, but I'm uncomfortable. Um, I'm uncomfortable. You need to ease me into things. And that's exactly what I was saying. Wow. Para mim, tudo novo, sim, sim. Tem que ter paciência. Um, and now she's saying that she needs to understand him a little better to comprehend why all of this is happening. Brian is actually going to have to stay at a hotel because her house is not accommodated to a wheelchair. And she's going to have to split her time between home and the hotel. Now, once they are on their way, Ingrid asks Brian what he would like to do for fun. Oh, and yeah. Brian's like, well, I want to meet people. I want to meet your friends. I want to meet your family. Eu não falei pra muitas pessoas sobre a gente. Eu não falei. And here's where we run into the first problem. Because Ingrid has not been completely honest with her friends or family. Is it the fact that he is on a wheelchair? Probably. Is it the fact that she's not sure about this relationship? also could be you can clearly tell by brian's face and that he is disappointed to hear that she hasn't told a lot of people about him ingrid proceeds to tell us that her parents are very hard-headed and this is what i had brought up at the beginning when i found out that ingrid didn't tell her parents about Brian because there's some older Latino people that think that having a disability is like the worst thing that could ever happen to you. They sometimes see it as an evil thing, you know, like it, it is part of Satan, which is not the case, but that's one of the reasons why she hasn't shared that information with her parents. Brian says that this is extremely important to him and I get it, you know, he wants to meet her family because he sees Ingrid as someone that he wants to marry. And that's something hard for me to just give up on. I'm just not going to take no for an answer. But when he says, I'm not going to give up no matter what, I was like, well, you have to let Ingrid do the work when it comes to her parents. She knows her parents. You don't. You don't know how they're going to react. And at the end of the day, if things don't work out, guess who's going to have to take the heat? Not you, her. Because you're going to be gone living your life in the U.S. while well, she's going to have to hear from her parents. And then he has the bright idea that it will be great to just show up. That's so dumb. Just show up at her parents' house and be like, hey, this is, this is Brian. You know, he's my boyfriend and he might propose to me and we're probably going to get married. In what world does that seem like a good idea? Nem eu que sou filha não entendo ele não. Quantos anos seu pai tem? And she's like, well, I think 51 or 54. And he's like, well, that's just my age. We're the same age, Ingrid. É a mesma idade, meu. Que isso? Ah? Eu? 51. Sim? Sí? Sabia não? That Ingrid's face completely 
changed. It's like the devil just sucked the life out of her. And Brian is over here acting like he had already told her. And she's utterly surprised. She's like, no, we didn't. You never mentioned it. When they met, he was 43. That's what he had said. And if they have been talking for two years, that puts him at 45. But Brian says that that's not something that he would hide because he's not embarrassed of his age. And he has this little like smile when he's saying that, like, wait, I didn't tell you that I was 51. Yes, I did. And that's the smile that people have when they're freaking lying. I don't think that she's lying because you have a history of lying. As to her, she doesn't. And now the lies are piling up. First, you said you were completely independent. Second, you said you were 45, when in reality, you are 51. And there's another one coming that she still doesn't know about. I don't think five years is a big difference. I mean, for me, age is just a number. I mean, I'm still the same guy that... And yes, Brian, the problem here is not the age gap. The problem is that you lied about it. You can't just go through life lying your way out of things just because it doesn't benefit you. And without addressing the issue that he lied, without apologizing to Ingrid for putting her in this situation, he just changes the subject. And here is where he starts talking about his disability, how, you know, driving is amazing for him because he doesn't have to ask other people to drive him around because when he had his accident at the beginning he had to ask his sister for help to drive him anywhere but now he's able to do that and then ingrid asks him how did the accident happen how did you get here hey y'all come look at this i was pensando eu nunca nunca contei para você que eu vendi vendi droga i never told her the whole story of how I became paralyzed. Are you serious? And the way he does it is what pisses me off because he goes, I never told you that I sold drugs. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You're just telling us that you didn't share that information with Ingrid and that you think that right now is a good time because she asked. Esposa, três gramos de cocaína na mesa. And he just starts dumping information. Dumping, dumping, dumping information. This is when I met my second wife. I was doing drugs. I was getting drunk. I was doing so many lines of this and just dumping all this information onto her. The least you could have done to show respect for Ingrid is say, hey, I am sorry that I didn't tell you. I am sorry that I lied to you and that I hid this from you because it's extremely important. But this is something that I did when I was younger. I am not that person anymore, but I can't even believe you anymore. I can't even believe that this is not what you want because your new addiction is lying and being a horrible piece of Eu tentei para deixar tudo atrás. Eu precisei um começo novo. But he says that he wanted to get out of that life, that he chose to change your life because one day he looked into the mirror and he was all the life was sucked out of him. He looked like a zombie. So he then went to tell his wife, hey, I don't want to be with you anymore because I cheated on you. I don't love you anymore. And then one or two months later, she was like, you know what? I need payback. So then she sent two guys and then they shot him because Brian decided to try to get the gun out of one of them. Pois isso era vida na cadeira. And I believe that you ended on this wheelchair and then that's when you decided that you no longer wanted to be part of that life. That's how I see it in my eyes. And of course, Ingrid is taken back after hearing all of this. She's like, I don't feel good about this. And what is his response? Não me sinto bem não, Brian. Não é para sentir bem. Chill, chill. It's not to make her feel good, idiot. You could have had many responses to your lying piece of shit. <laughs> and instead, you chose to make her feel like she's the problem one thing that brian is also doing is that he keeps like looking back at her like i can't believe that you're upset about this and it's so frustrating because here you have a guy that's lying his way through life that's trying to start a relationship 
with someone from Latin America because he hasn't been able to find anyone in the United States. Anytime that he, Ingrid discovers a lie coming out of him, he's surprised. He's like, oh shit, I lied to you. Oh wow, like I didn't know I did that. Like he's not in control of his own decisions. And once they get to the hotel, Brian is excited to get into the pool while Ingrid is like, no, I'm gonna go get us some food. And I will be too. She's getting all of this news within 72 hours of things that she had no idea. I genuinely feel for her. I feel pain for her. She has been deceived. She has been lied to, especially because her children are also involved. If she decides to bring this man into her life, she's bringing this man into her children's life. And is this what she wants to give to them? Is this the example that she wants to provide for them? I wouldn't. Now, Ingrid is also trying to fight her belief system. And she also says that she feels deceived by Brian, which she has been deceived by him. And when we check back on Brian. I'm, I'm upset, I guess, because I feel like I'm being judged. The poor little baby is angry because he feels like he's being judged. The comments that got to me were, you were a drug dealer before. You can revert back to that like tomorrow. They're judging you for your freaking decisions. She has every single right to judge you after all the lies that you have said to her. So why don't you get The reasons why he's upset is because of the comments that he heard. Angry said something along the lines of, you're not selling drugs because you're on a wheelchair. And I don't blame her. I am sorry, but dude, you lied to her for two years. You could have told her the truth. You had many opportunities to do so, and you chose not to because it didn't benefit you. Because as she says later, Eu não teria prosseguido se ele tivesse me falado que tinha. You were waiting to tell her right now because you knew if you share those things with her, she was not going to pursue a relationship with you. And you know, everyone has their things that they don't want in their life. It's okay for Ingrid to not want someone that used to do drugs or that was a drug dealer in the past. And I also agree with Ingrid when it comes to if her relationship starts with a lie, are you supposed to trust him? It was not one lie. And it's not like it was, you know, a white lie or something small. These are huge lies so i am excited to see what's going to happen in the next episode again i am heartbroken to see all of the things that have come out about brian i was really excited to see a character like him in the 90 day fiance world and i was excited to see someone that is disabled in the 90 day fiance world with a good heart and i guess it's okay i get disappointed one more time whatever but that's what we get for Ingrid and Brian. I'm so glad to be back. Thank you for watching me. Thank you for waiting for me. And I hope that you guys have a beautiful day. As always, let me know your thoughts about this episode. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share with a friend or two. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. I would also like to give a special thanks to our members, Haiti Angel, Happy One 2017, and give a round of applause to our new member, JJ. Thank you so much, guys. I really, really appreciate you.